We're going to talk about the Burlington area of days gone by, days when bread was 17 cents a loaf and pot, well, that's something in which you planted a flower. <laughs> I'm your co-host, Bill Keogh, along with Joey Donovan and our special guest, Ken Spagnola. Joey and I are Burlington natives. We, we're two score, is it two score years or something like that wow. around. And uh, we served in the legislature representing the city. Again, our special guest is Ken Spagnola. Ken, what qualifies you to be a chump? Oh, I mean, uh, <laughs> be on a program. Well, I was uh, born in Burlington, like both of you, and I spent uh, a lot of time in the Ward 1 section. That's where I grew up. My father was a Miller and uh, uh, military guy from 40s and Allen, and uh, we had uh, he had seven children. We lived on Bear Street, and uh, it was uh, it was kind of rough in those days, 1930s. Mm. Uh, but we got we got through it all right. Everybody was happy. We didn't know what it was like to be poor. We didn't. Uh, we uh, mean rich. We didn't, no, even we didn't even know what it was like to be poor. Okay. Because you know we we thought was. we thought that's the way it had to. Okay. It was. In those the depression days. It was the depression days. Yeah. And uh, we had we had enough to eat. We had clothes to go on our back. We went to school with all of our neighbors the same way. So you know. Uh, so did you go to the old Ira Allen School? Old Ira Allen School. And uh, and back then. Uh, Ira Allen had school took in the kids from my neighborhood, plus the kids up around uh, the uh, Prospect Street area. Yeah. And then, of course, when Taft School was Opened. built, all of a sudden I went to school <laughs> and there was only half a class <laughs> where there was 30 kids. Now there was only 15. So I wondered, where'd they go? So somebody said they built a new school. So <laughs> <laughs> Did you walk to school? I walked to school. Up and the hill. Up the hill in the middle of the winter. And, uh, it was uphill both ways. Oh, and it was, it was tough. Six feet of snow. Six, uh, my kids always talk about it. Yeah, Dad, we know. Six feet of snow. And VHS and it, was even a further trip for you, wasn't it? <laughs> yes. That was a long hike. Yeah, it was, but it was... Um, it was a lot of fun. Throw snowballs at the girls, and uh, you know, they, then. Uh, but as all as the guys walk together, and the girls walk together. You never see a guy and a girl walking together. Absolutely not. No, no, because then uh, you know. So where'd you go to school? You went to Burlington High School. Went right to Burlington High School, and uh, the transition was something that uh, I, I, to this day, I think about it, and I say, oh my God, it was, it was, you know, you're coming out of this little grammar school, and all of a sudden. The kids you go to school with are all neighbors and relatives and all that. Then all of a sudden I'm in Burlington or uh, the junior high school. Right. Now I'm looking at guys and kids from the north end, the south end, you know, in the middle of the town. And I said, wow, and got to That's know these. Now I said, boy, what fun that was, <laughs> you know, getting to know other kids. And, and when I got how home. How many kids did you graduate with? Back in uh, 19, what was it? 48. 48. From high school. There was 178, I think, of us, something like mm. that, which was big. probably the big, and of course, Burlington was the biggest school yeah. in Vermont. Sure. And uh, everybody, you know, if you went to Burlington High School, you kind of puffed your chest out about going to the biggest school. Except if you went to Cathedral. Well, right. Cathedral was our little <laughs> brothers, you know, <laughs> the little guys. It was always a great rivalry. But they were the tough guys. It was always a great rivalry. Oh, okay, this is, this is Halloween night, and, we, and as we speak, there are parents out there with their kids going door to door doing the trick-or-treat challenge. But last night was cabbage night. Now, I don't know, I didn't see any evidence of cabbage night uh, today at all. Ken, do you know, what's, what was Cabbage Night to you? Cabbage Night for us was the guys getting together and saying, okay, here's the night that we have the fun. Because we didn't go around getting candy at the doors. You know, that was kind of, eh, you know, you don't do those things back in those days. Gosh, I mean, no, we yeah, yeah. So we would uh, we'd plan what we're going to do. First what? thing we're going to do is raid all the gardens. <laughs> you know, <laughs> the, 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 the people that had gardens with and that's, I think that's where Cabbage Night came from. Yeah. We used to go get the cabbages and then throw them at houses and all, all, all that stuff, you know. And, uh, 
And uh, sometimes, though, if you went to other neighborhoods, you had to be careful because you had, like, rival gangs. In, in really? In those oh, days? Oh, oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. I can remember one night we got a little bit farther out of the south end than we were supposed to be, you know, up towards Mud Alley that you were talking about. Or Lakeside. And, and, uh, yeah, and Lakeside. Oh, you didn't go into, by the way, you didn't go into Lakeside unless no, they... you were invited. <laughs> Oh, go ahead. Sorry. Continue your story. Yeah. That's a caller, but if, they, if you want to call this show, 862-3966. You know, uh, my father would never let us out of the house on Cabbage Night, and he would make a big speech and said, I never raised any one of you to be vandals. That's exactly what it was, vandals. Because and he just call. would get so upset. Oh, my father, we, my father knew what we were doing. It, we'd be in big trouble. And the soaping of the cars. Oh, soaping of the cars. <laughs> and waxing people's windows. Yeah. Dear. And I do remember... And chasing the, and chasing the girls, too. He'd get oh, I did Now, what, sorry pro what, the, what sorry proper the, girl... Sorry for the distraction. I what, apologize. What proper girl would ever be out on Cabbage Night? Uh, some of them, that will, they get together and be a good thing <sighs> because they were looking for their boyfriends or just, just you know... Ah. Scary no, stuff. So what, what the, the strategy was, people's gardens were deteriorating this time. Uh, yeah. the, the tomatoes were rotting. Yeah. The cabbages were rotting. Right. And you guys would throw stuff at houses and cars. Well, the cabbage was probably yeah. usable. And I'm, what else? You'd probably get yeah. some potatoes. Not a lot. I mean, you know, just once in a while, you wouldn't just go <laughs> arbitrarily go out and start throwing every car. Once in a while, you'd see a car and throw it and then run. Okay. And, yeah, yeah. and we'd hide behind the houses. You know, and, and oh, and the other thing too were the grapes. Down grapes. There, people would have these big, beautiful grape vines out in the backyard where they grew them for wine, especially the Italian neighborhood. And we'd sneak in there, and, and you could hide real good because you get down under the vine. <laughs> <laughs> but can you imagine, Bill? Here we are. It's midnight, and we're sitting around eating a oh, big cabbage. And then get ready to go to bed. <laughs> Could oh, you imagine God. doing that today? No. <laughs> so would you know? We also you had wax and soap. You wax yeah. cars or you soap cars. Right. Well, now, what was the difference? Oh, oh the, the, Well, you the, wax the cars, the people you really didn't the like. The windows. It. You right? put wax on the windows. Wax window. is harder to get off. It's harder to get off. It's, so those yeah. are the mean people. Right. The soap, yeah. you just put water on it. Yeah, and, it's and it gone. just comes off and... Uh, but, you know, you had to be careful, too, because if you got into somebody's car that was really, uh, you know, physical, they could chase you down. Mm -hmm. what, what about the police during these days? Do you remember them they being out? Were, yeah, the, the, <clears throat> the police were really good. They would patrol, but they really didn't, uh, you know, get too frisky about it. You know, they just kind of make sure that nobody got into real serious stuff. No fires and stuff like that. So uh, as long as you, you know, just were having uh, the, the kids' stuff fun, then uh, they wouldn't yeah. and, and by the way, the nice part about it, too, was we all knew the cops because they were our neighbors. Right. <laughs> I knew every cop on the police force. And, uh, and, and no, I heard somebody, heard somebody put shaving cream across the road. Well, I don't remember that. You know, I was at the golf course not long ago, and a guy was telling me he watched the show, and he would say, I, we used to put shaving cream across the road because oh, the... I don't remember that. Yeah, Bill was telling me that last night, and I had to think about it, and then he said, what, what would you think if you were driving, and all of a sudden you came across this big yeah. white thing? Yeah, well, that's, you know, that, that could be dangerous. Oh, you'd I, slow down, right. the guy behind sure. you harpoon you. Right. But it was, obviously, it was, shaving cream was nothing. <laughs> nothing. And how about toilet paper? What'd they do with toilet paper? It's, they still do that. Yeah. With all of a sudden you have the trees oh, all beautifully decorated with rolls and rolls of toilet paper. But do you know, uh, you're talking about stuff that costs money. So back in, in, in the day when I, we were yeah, out there doing that. the cabbage night stuff, we didn't have money to go buy shaving cream or toilet paper and stuff or, like that. Or eggs. Or, or, egg. or eggs. So where'd you get the eggs? You steal them well, from your refrigerator at home? Uh, we'd have to get a couple, yeah, we, well, you know, Get one of the guys that was that had a lot of money. Let him go get the eggs out of his refrigerator because there's no way that dare. I, there's no <laughs> way I dare take it out of my refrigerator. Did you ever get caught doing anything? Uh, not really. No, we could run. 
<laughs> I mean, we could run. And you knew backyards and really we well. Backyards, hide behind the church, and all of the. So, Joey, what did you do? You stayed home and I uh, stayed home. And knitted or read a book. I never knit. I yeah. might have read a book, but no. My father was very seriously against Cabbage Night. Why? Well, as as I said, he, he just hurt. he. Now that we could get hurt, he just did not think any of his kids should be doing damage out there. Yeah. So uh, he, he was very strict about that. So I don't think my brothers or Your sisters... Your brothers didn't go out? No, I don't believe so. Huh. Now they may tell me that I'm totally wrong and that they didn't were very adventurous back... and that they went out, but not to my knowledge. You know, Johnny and Jimmy didn't run out the back door and come in? I can't speak for them. And if I knew, <laughs> I wouldn't be telling you. <laughs> but you know, and it all happened when it was dark. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. And, uh, under the cover of darkness. Yeah. Can you imagine trying to do it now with all the traffic that's out there? Oh, I don't, yeah. There were there weren't that many cars on the road back in those days. Right. So, if you've got a story on your Halloween or your Cabbage Night, give us a call eight six two three nine six six. That's eight six two three nine six six. We have Joey Donovan and Kenny Spagnola. I'm Bill Kio, your co-host. Give us a call if you want to share something. That's very private or not so private. Just let us know what your experience was on Cabbage Night or Halloween. All right, how, let's go to Halloween now. Now you go you trick or treat. Do you remember one of your costumes? Oh, I know. No, but I do. We did uh, dress up our kids in, co in whatever costume. But what about you back in the day? Oh, no. no, I just no. wore my we costume. Never got, oh, we never had costumes. I just wore my <laughs> costumes in my period, Joey. Oh, yeah, I, we, I remember that costume. Well. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, so so you, did you take your kids door to door? I yes, I did for years. Yes. And what street was this? Is Prospect Street or? Uh... No, we this was off South Union Street. Oh, okay. And um, so they it was a big, wonderful territory for my mm. children to, because there were a lot of houses nearby, and um, they would go. And as they got older, they would go with a group of friends, and uh, they would have a great, I think, really a wonderful, wonderful time. And uh, I used to be nervous about the cars because the kids oftentimes would have masks on oh, yeah. or some costumes, so their their vision would right. be limited. Yeah. And then cars, you, don't, you, know, you think people are always aware of trick-or-treaters, but you get worried sometimes that people aren't always as vigilant. And what did you do to collect candy with? Well, I was a deep believer in large pillowcases. Oh, large pillowcases. <laughs> yes. Why did you use a pillowcase? Well, and actually, sometimes it would get so heavy, you know, yeah. you'd have to almost go back home it's and like get a, another. Well, because it was big. It was a bag. And it was deep, and you could really get a lot of loot. A lot of loot. <laughs> yeah. You used a bag as well? Well. Uh, a pillowcase as well? Uh, or did you do that at I, all? I didn't do it at all. Oh. No. Well, tell me more, Joey. Well, I mean, I hate to really share the the, th the hardest thing I think when I think back on Halloween was the day after Halloween is a holy day, All Saints Day. True. So we at going to Catholic school, we never had to go to school because it was a holy oh. day. But you couldn't break your fast with any of your candy till you'd gone to mass. <laughs> <laughs> so you'd get up in the morning and have this glorious bag or pillowcase full of candy, and you just had to be so disciplined because you had to go to church before you could start to dig in. But uh, my children didn't have that because it was no longer a, a, a holy day that you had to go to. I hope I have that right in case I don't. I used to get my kids candy, and I say, okay, now you put, put it up here, put it on the shelf. I'll, we'll give it to you later little by little. Well, then I would go. I would go to the candy yeah, bowl, course. and I take out the licorice. Oh, I, <laughs> I love licorice, and uh, I got away with that for a long time until they caught me once. Hey, Dad, what are you doing? Are you eating my candy? I got caught doing that. I, I used do to do I, with some of my older children. I would put the candy on the ref top of the refrigerator, and they would. Be, he offered two pieces or something every night and would last for till December. <laughs> that that quickly stopped. And the younger ones, I and mean, they would come in and trade, you know, I'll give you two Fifth Avenues for, yeah, yeah, for sure. a Sky Bar. Um, and then it was like, just go to town, eat, eat it all, <laughs> be sick, and we'll be over Halloween. Yeah. So now you go to some places, you used to do some strategy as to where you went. I mean, we used to go up on the hill because we thought the richer people lived up uh, on the hill section of Burlington, so mm -hmm. we'd go up there, even though it was quite a walk. 
But that was our strategy. And then the other strategy you talked about, Joey, was... Well, you'd find out where were the people who gave the big right. chocolate bars. Yeah, we didn't want those apples stuff. Back oh. with those apples and pears. That was awful. Remember, man. finally, when the people, you were warned because somebody had put razors into the oh, apples yeah. or something? The, the pins. Yeah, the so pins. finally, people had to give up giving those rotten apples out. <laughs> Or another thing that was always disappointing to me was the um, bags of popcorn as well. Because we always had popcorn at home, you know, we pop popcorn, <laughs> it's like, pfft. but we didn't have Sky Bars and Snickers. But if you knew some house that had good like uh, uh, Swix or some little nice little right. sweet bar or any what was good chocolate, it's a little candy bar. Yeah. It's a little with a, yeah. like a like a graham cracker in between. Oh. Yeah, and yeah, something like they, that. I don't think they had those when I was trick or treating. No, well, but no. you, but you would pass the word. You know, that house over there, they give apples. <laughs> we'll skip those. We'll skip those. We'll go to the other one. Give the big Hershey bars or the Mr. Good bars or. But then I think we also talked about Burlington became sort of a designated place for Halloween, and I think people would bring their drive their kids in here, because it was easy. I think that still happens down the Five Sisters, that people will come in because they know these houses are all right in a row. People are very friendly and love it and <clears throat> decorate their houses. And um, uh, some of my friends that live down there say Halloween has just become huge down there. You know, that they're just carloads of kids coming in and they love it. It's like the neighborhood I lived in too. You know, uh, when we first moved up there, it was all brand new houses. No, what and street was this? Uh, this was uh, Valley View Drive okay. and uh, where Pinewood Essex. Manor. Yep. So the word got around Essex that Pinewood Manor's got all these new houses and all new families. And wow. Guys come, <clears throat> engineers coming in from IBM, so they, they'd all truck them up in. They think and, maybe you were going to give them the big chocolate bars? Well, they, they did that plus uh, a lot of a lot of candy, you know. So they'd come in and uh, the the I, I can fathers see. and mothers drop the kids off and they'd walk up. The street, and then meet them on the other side. Wait for them. Up the other. They wouldn't come to the door. They let the kids come up. Yeah, well, I can see. I suppose you know where, where houses are quick, like very close together, and if you live in a more rural area, That's it's real easy to drop off and. That's not an efficient it, use of your time going between houses. You got to be oh, sure that's those right. are close together. I know, and your where you live now in your Birchcliff Parkway yeah. neighborhood, that also that's very efficient. But it, yeah, yeah, so it right. must have a lot of kids. Well, actually, not not lately. No. Well, oh, no. they they go pretty much from five to five to seven. Seven o'clock, the whole deal is is pretty much done with by seven o'clock. Then we bring in the teenagers, as yeah. we talked about earlier. They come in later on, <laughs> drive up with their Mercedes Benz, and the kids get out and they go to door to door. Some of that. the some of the teenagers that I uh, the last, I live in a condominium now, so we don't, I don't get anybody at all. But um, when I lived in our family home, the teenagers, as you said, would come about seven thirty or eight o'clock, and some of them would be so creative, though their costumes would be a riot. Mm -hmm. And they would be high school kids, but they were, I always, always, um, they were always very polite. They always seemed to be, they always had a big pack of friends together, you know, and they're having such a great time. Well, my mother used to, when they come up with those pillowcases kind of thing, and, and there's a lot of candy in them, but, you know, by 5 30, 6 o'clock, and she would get a big, grab a big uh, a handful <laughs> of candy. And she put it in the bag and swirl it around, and only drop one or two. I mean, she, she, she'd yeah. say, these kids have got enough candy. They don't, they don't need any more. We save it for the people who are coming in later on. Oh, my God. So I think uh, it's probably starting now. It's getting dark outside, huh? Uh, yeah. Well, they, they, uh, it used to be daylight savings time would have ended right. by this time. That's right. And so Halloween would be dark. It would be That's dark right. at 430 or 5. Yeah. But now it's later. But t tell me, before the show, we talked about dentists not liking to yeah. have oh, all yeah. this candy stuff. The, your dentists, they thrive on cavities. <laughs> That's a negative <laughs> way of putting it. But uh, to avoid cavities, the dentists did not like all this candy distribution to the kids. So what was your experience with that? And then Ken will give another. I, You know, I... I don't re remember that. What, what did we talk about that? Well, it, it, I do know there was one neighbor that used to give toothbrushes. Okay, yeah. 
Toothbrush. Really? I, I avoided that place, I'll tell you. <laughs> Kenny. Well, I live next door to Dr. Lawrence, who was uh, really, um, uh, he was adamant about kids getting any of candy. So he would give apples, and so his wife says, well, why don't you, let's get some gum. He says, that's right. We got sugarless gum now. Oh, so boy. he would buy sugarless gum so that the kids would say, okay, now he's coming around to our <laughs> that, that thing of thinking. So he liked that, the idea of that. See, the but, kids didn't have sealants and all those things. Now they prevent <laughs> cavities. <laughs> but he, he was quite a guy. Yeah, he said, now oh, we're going to give apples. Where so was Dr. He, Lawrence's practice? Uh, in Essex. Uh, he was down on um, Lincoln, uh, uh, Lincoln uh, yeah, Street. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ha, I remember him. Yeah, nice fella. We used to do a lot with him. And a matter of fact, uh, his wife Carlene lives still lives next door to us. She just turned ninety. Oh wow! And uh, we do. We used to do a lot together. And she's a real sweetheart. Oh, so that's did, great. So, going door to door, did you? You didn't do too much. No. Did. But you he did. was above all that. No, uh, were yeah, you above I mean, all that? Uh, <laughs> if you went door to door, you were a sister. You couldn't. You, a guy like you wouldn't stay home. I can't believe that. No, we <laughs> we went out, right? We went out, but we didn't. I didn't go door to door to get. What'd you we do? didn't even get candy. Oh, we just ran Followed around. the girls. Yeah, <laughs> no, just just had fun. Just hung out, you know. Matter of fact, we used to, you know, go downtown, go down to Church Street. We love Church Street. All of us guys love church here, and we because, it, because did you go to the Concord Kitchen? Oh, the Concord Kitchen and Upton's, of course, and then Uptons. of course Finnegan's was for the guys from and girls from Cathedral. Yeah, Upton's was Burlington, and we used to meet a lot. That's you know, and, Upton's was uh, on Main Street. Where was no, Upton's? Upton's, Upton's the corner, corner of Main and Church Street. Main and Church Street. Yeah, that well. was that was really the hangout. Yeah, and boy, you you know when you were. Uh, in the eighth grade or ninth grade or freshman in high school, and if you could hang out on Church Street for a little bit around nine or ten o'clock at night, you thought you really thought you were something. Yeah, I don't remember the Concord ki Kitchen at all, but I hear, you know, you that's, you that's told me that. opposite where Lipton's is. It, it's now, where Lip. It is where Lipton's oh, is. Oh, is it? Yeah. Okay. Huh, okay. Yeah, I don't think it was existed when I finally was able to hang out on Church Street, but I do remember Finnegan's. They they used oh, to have yeah. the best butterscotch Sundays oh. in town. And, and you're right, there were certain people from Cathedral High School that spent a good part of their life holding that building up, the well, Sonic Temple. Well, where Cathedral was yeah. in Burlington, Upton's where Burlington High School was. What about the Dutch Treat Mincers on Main Street? Was that, do you oh, remember that? No, no. It was right next to the Strong Theater. Oh, I, I, uh, there was a drugstore there. Would that be the same place? I remember the drugstore was Coleman's, which is next yeah, to the Flint Theater. No, I, mean, well, the strong I don't remember a drugstore well, there. Because when I went to Burlington Business College, I used to have breakfast there every morning. <laughs> and, that, wow. and it was a barbershop. Uh, uh, Rolls Barbers. Rolls Next door was a drugstore. Maybe that's the Maybe place that's you're it. talking yeah, about. Yeah. Huh. But it's a whole different place now, isn't it? Oh, I used to work at the Grand Union right across the road, which... If you can believe a Grand Union, one of the what the you know the one of the major grocery stores in a little building about the size of this studio on Main Street. On Main Street. Is that where Stop and Shop was afterwards? Stop and Shop. Oh really? That was the Grand Union before yeah. the Stop and Shop. That I was worked, a small. I there in high school. And, and that and Pizza also. by Charles was there, and it's where Mirabelle's is now. Yeah. Okay. Ned Park Hill owned it. And that's the, that, the building. That's the Park, Park Hill, Hill building. building. That's right. My father's law practice was upstairs, oh, is that right? right above, uh, right above the um, grocery store and where Alan Bruce was. And all Alan was a little bit further yeah. towards the lake. Right. Same building though. Same. No. 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 no different building. Okay. The Park Hill building was lower. Yeah. But um, I remember that building so maybe I, I probably ran into your father quite a bit then. So do you go to Brooklyn Business College? Yeah. Did you go to those classrooms up there? And upstairs, right. Upstairs. Yes. Above McGregor's Drugstore? Right above McGregor, yeah. And that's where I met my wife. As a matter of Boy, what that place has been quite a success now. What do we know it now? Wow. What's it Dude. called now? Uh, Champlain College. And it's four-year degree. The and guy that started that was C. Bader Brulette. Yeah. And my, and my brother worked for him. He was oh, a Oh, and? And Who is Jensen. Al Jensen? Al Jensen. There is, is a, a Hall, Jensen Hall, on South Willard That's Street now. I didn't know Al Jensen. Al Jensen and Bader, C. Bader Brulette bought Burlington, started yeah. Burlington Business College, and uh, 
Yeah, the, and then, of course, they, then I think then Al, Al, Al Jess was the city council of, of Alderman, Board of Alderman at that time. Hmm. He died prematurely. Yeah, but. he owned a, a, a C. Bader Brulette owned a tile company, uh, sealing <coughs> tiles, because my brother worked for him for a little while. Isn't that? He was quite an entrepreneur, oh, huh? He was, yeah. He, I think he came from out of town, though. Oh. Hmm. Yeah, he was, a, he was a force, one of the forces starting to come in. Champlain now has that a major in gaming, which is foreign to me. But um, these young, very bright students come and they design games for you know applications and stuff. And they're 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 attracting kids from really all over the place. That's for a big that industry. It, it is really huge. Is. And that's headquartered down on their lakeside campus. Yeah, it's really something. Yeah, yeah, it's amazing. Yeah. It's amazing how big uh, Champlain College got. Yep. Have you seen the dormitory they're building downtown? It, it, it now that it, I've been watching it, you know, from the scaffolding, and you know, I go down uh, Maple Street a lot, and it's just been so wonderful all summer to what keep it going. It keeps getting like bigger and bigger. It's going to be like Boston University in Boston. Yeah, they buying it's everything. Quite, it's quite expanded but, right and now. They've done a good. Both the university, Champlain, and the university have done a good job in preserving all those buildings. Pretty. Oh, happy. I think so. Mm -hmm. That stuff is costly. Happy about do that. that. So you go down Summit or you go down Willard Street. Yeah, yeah. People Maple. like us remember those places. Yes. People, the young kids today wouldn't, wouldn't know what no, they're they were. take it for granted. That's well, I mean, when I, th I think back to urban renewal and think of some of the lovely homes that we've lost in that neighborhood as well. There, I mean, there was certainly some sub housing that wasn't so great, but there were some very lovely homes. Beautiful homes there. And beautiful woodwork. Oh, I yeah. remember going out of those yeah. homes. I remember that. Uh, Kenny, what was the name of that school? That was torn down in urban renewal. Uh, see, if, see if I can stump this chump. I think H.O. Can... Wheeler? No. 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 H.O. Uh, Wheeler exists uh, today. Yeah, that's right, it does. Uh, I'm blanking. You're blanking. You want to stump two chumps on this you one? did. Whoa. Oh, a double header. Whoa. I can't believe it. I can see it because it looked just like all the other, all the other old ones. red brick right. buildings. Yeah, like, uh, used to play touch football in the backyard with the Marolas and the Nanas and the, the Barracionis. Hmm. Oh, gee whiz. You don't remember that one. I can't, oh, I can, can't remember. I can't remember oh. either. Caller, do you know the name of that school? 862-3966. That was a school that was torn down in the urban renewal days, down near Bank Street, Cherry Street. Right across from Reedy's Funeral South Home. South Champlain. Mm -hmm. Reedy Funeral Home, I think, was opposite Cathedral Church, but that's right. That's right, because that was Pine it, Street, and this was down in Champlain Street, the school. Yeah, right. 862-3966, if you've got the answer as to what that school, name of that school was. Because and the same thing with Ira Allen School, why they tore that, that, that was the first one. Yeah. That they, and they took it down and then everybody says, oh, wait no, a minute. Ira Allen School, that's up on Colchester Avenue. Right. They tore the original down. Oh, yeah. yeah. The original was just like. Just like. Just like there. Right, exactly. The old there. Yeah, the old there. And thing. then they started thinking, oh my God, we can't be t taking these uh, schools down. They're, uh, they're historical yes. sites. Yes, yeah, well, that's too bad. Of historical I got sites. a brick out of that building, by the way. Oh, the answer to that question is, college, you didn't have the answer? Converse. Converse School is right. Congress. Con Converse. Converse. Oh, Converse. Converse School. Converse. That was well, hard. As a result of that, I'll give you each other. Oh, uh, I got a Tootsie Halloween Roll. Candy. Thank you. A Tootsie Roll. A Boy. Tootsie Roll. Thank you. On this Halloween. This and proves on, that I'm a chump to come here. <laughs> this is the pain. I don't even have a pillowcase to put it in. <laughs> <laughs> and on that note, thank you for sharing this 35, 30 minutes with the Stump the Chumps. Thank you, Joey, for showing up again. Yes, been Kitty fun. Spagnola, you're always a good friend from the old days. Thanks for watching Stump the Chumps. We'll see you in a while. <laughs>